Hello YouTubers, this is Audio Bird. You may recall my video on how to make speakers out of coffee cans uh, about a year or so ago. Well today we're going to show you how you can make some killer speakers out of using ordinary PVC sewer pipe like we have here along with a few other components. First you're going to need one of these 90 degree elbows that you can get at your home center along with your pipe. You're going to need a couple of these closet flanges. These are called closet flanges because they bolt to the floor and you set your toilet on that. We're going to set our speaker on it. You're also going to need another little piece of this PVC pipe cut about one and three quarter inches long to use as a shim inside of the elbow. We'll show you how that works in a little while. And of course another piece you're going to need is a couple of pieces of wood. You're going to need this piece of uh, half inch plywood that we've cut out here and painted black. We have a hole for the speaker here and it's about seven and a quarter inches in diameter and the speaker hole is about three and fifteen sixteenths of an inch. And that speaker hole is where we're going to mount our speaker we're going to use in this project. This is a full range Visaton speaker that you can get from MCM.com online. It sells for about eleven bucks. It has tremendously good sound from about eighty hertz to 20 kilohertz, got a little wizard cone here in the middle, and it's made by our friends in Germany, the Visaton Corporation, makes some high quality audio uh, and video uh, in the European market, and they're now becoming available in the US. So stand by, in a few minutes we're going to show you how we assemble these pipe speakers. Alright, what you're going to be needing for this project is a 38 inch length of Schedule 40 PVC pipe. Now you can buy this at your home center, comes in five foot or ten foot lengths. You'll probably buy two five foot lengths if you're going to build two speakers. Obviously for stereo you're going to need two. You want to cut them exactly 38 inches long. And when you measure it, using your handy dandy Stanley rule, make sure at the 38 inch mark uh, you take some masking tape and a pencil and mark off all the way around the pipe like this with the masking tape. And then you take your handy dandy hacksaw and you cut it off at that point. Now the, as, you, as you cut you rotate the saw or the pipe and the saw will go through it very easily. It makes it easy if you've got one of these uh, little cradles that I built here that will hold a piece of a five foot pipe. Now the next measurement you're going to make after you've cut off your 38 inches, you're going to measure up from the bottom about two and one half inches. And uh, at the two and a half inch mark you're going to do, take this little square of cardboard that I've made, it's a little uh, template, and you're going to put it on the pipe at that two and one half inch mark. Let me get this out here so you can see it better. And you're going to mark around it with this marking pen. And what I'm using is a dry erase marker so you don't mess up the pipe. So then you'll have a little square. What you want to do is go all the way around the pipe about two and a half inches, three and a half inches around the pipe, make another square, then make another one. And you'll have three equally spaced squares around the pipe. And when you're finished it should look like this end of the pipe. Now this is, I'm using the same pipe as a demo, so I didn't, that's why I didn't cut the other ends. Now, we got one, we got two, and we got three. Now these are the ports that the sound is going to emanate from once you get the system constructed. The next thing you're going to do is install these banana jack plugs. Now you can buy these again at either Radio Shack or through MCM.com. And uh, you notice how I've got them here mounted inside and I have the wire soldered onto it that runs up to the top of the pipe. Now you're going to use about 60 inches of wire to be safe. You may not use all that wire, but utilize 60 inches of wire to your banana plugs. All right, in the next segment we're going to show you how this all goes together. By the way, how these cuts were made, uh, at the corner of each square I drilled a one quarter inch hole with my, my electric drill. Then I took my jigsaw and I put it down into each one of those holes and just simply carved them out right around, all the way around the square. A jigsaw with a very fine blade uh, will go right through this stuff very quickly. And when you're finished you take a wood rasp 
and uh, file it down on the edges to get the edges nice and smooth. Now if you want to paint this pipe, you can do that, but we want you to do it before you assemble the pipe. It makes it uh, a lot easier to paint. It'll take just about any kind of paint. Uh, you might want a primer at first. I use a spray gray auto primer on mine when I paint them. But for this project, we left it uh, just pure sanitary white. Uh, for those of you folks who uh, uh, want to decorate, you can also use that uh, contact paper. That looks pretty good on some of these. That's great for a kid's room if you're going to use this in the corner of a kid's room. Uh, uh, they can decorate it any way they want. Okay, in the next segment, now we're going to put this thing together. You remember I showed you one of the parts we were going to be using, one of these water closet bases, uh, sometimes known as a toilet to flange. Well, we'd, we're going to make our base out of that. That's where you actually uh, uh, mount the pipe. What we've done, we've cut out a piece of three-quarter or half-inch plywood in this case. We painted it black because we like black and it kind of contrasts with the white. And then we took our flange and we mounted it right on the bottom and that becomes our base. Now how do we get this thing together? First we start with our pipe. Bring our pipe up, put it over the base like this, raise it up and slam it down and it's on there tight. Now you can elect if you want to to get PVC cement and cement these all together but once you do that they're there forever and you can't make any changes. So I kind of like to keep mine loosey-goosey. There's very few air leaks. You can't even detect any air leaks when they're slammed together like this. Now for the next portion of the pipe, we have to make some little changes. Now the wires that I've got down inside of the pipe, you want to bring out so we don't lose them. And inside this particular pipe, I have some stuffing. This is ordinary polyfill stuffing that you can get from your local uh, Walmart or craft store. You want to put inside the pipe about four ounces of this stuff. I know it's hard to measure four ounces, but a couple of handfuls of this stuff stuffed down inside the pipe like this. You don't want to stuff it real tight. You want to leave it kind of loose because you want to be able to have the uh, airflow through it, but you don't want to uh, plug it up totally, otherwise it's going to affect the sound quality. Now once you've got the pipe stuffed, you're going to take your elbow that we showed you a while ago. And you have cut a ring out, hopefully you've cut your ring out of one and three quarter inches of scrap pipe. You're going to put that ring inside of one end of the elbow. Now the best way to get it in there, again, slam them down. That does it, it's in pretty tight. What I'll do in this case is I'll take a hammer and I'll finish the installation inside the pipe. Now the reason we do that is that our flange that's going to go in here and hold the speaker uh, won't fit unless you make this little collar that goes inside of the pipe. Now you fit this on top of the pipe like this. Make sure you feed your wires through. And you want to face it opposite of where your plugs are in the bottom like that. And then again slam it down. And there, now you've assembled most of your speaker. In a few minutes we're going to show you how you put the speaker in the uh, top of it and we're ready to see how it works. Now we got our pipe setting in our cradle. We're going to finish up our, our installation here. Remember I showed you before, we cut some uh, half inch plywood out and we put a hole in the middle of it, exactly 3 and 15 sixteenths. That's about 7 and a quarter inches in diameter. Now this is then fastened to the front of our other closet flange that we bought using some uh, sheet metal screws. And this is what you end up with. There's your baffle, your baffle plate, and here's your Visaton speaker mounted on the front of the baffle plate. We use some half inch uh, sheet metal screws with some washers to hold it on there. Now one thing you want to do to your Visaton speaker before you mount it on the front is to take some of that quarter inch foam insulation material that you can buy. Uh, it comes in strips at your home center and it's self sticky and you stick it around the edge of the speaker. This will assure you of a very tight seal into our baffle plate when we, uh, when we mount the speaker. So we've mounted our speaker and now to finish up our project we want to add some uh, little bit of uh, stuffing behind the pipe. Just a few pieces of uh, polyfill behind the pipe to uh, dampen it down a little bit there. And then you're ready to go and you do the same thing here but this one you can push in pretty tightly with your hand and you've got a solid, solid speaker and ready to go uh, connected up to your amplifier. 
These work out very well uh, in a small room or a moder modestly sized room. They're great for dorm rooms uh, and for kids' rooms. And particularly if you put them in the corner, you get greater base uh, out of them and a corner placement. They're easy to build, they're inexpensive to build, and they're very lightweight. I mean, you can, anybody can heft one of these things around. And you'll be surprised at the amount of sound quality that you get out of pipe speakers. Now watch for future videos. We're going to show you some variations of spike pipe speakers using some larger speakers than the 4-inch. I think you'll find those very interesting. This is Audio Bird saying, enjoy your sound. You never know when it's going to end. <laughs>